hearts of a bite no Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today to share these few moments together to share this message. We do this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is one of the five major feast days of the Armenian Church. As I promised you last week, I told you we're going to be continuing on these concepts. But first, let's talk about what this feast is. In the Armenian Church, there's five major feast days, three of which are dedicated to Jesus Christ, namely his life events, his birth, Christmas, Easter, his resurrection, and his transfiguration. The fourth feast day we just celebrated last month is the feast day of the Assumption, having to do with his mother, the Holy Mother of God, Saint Mary. And today has to do with the Holy Cross. The Holy Cross. Now listen to this for a moment. We celebrate the five major feasts. We celebrate today the Feast of the Holy Cross. People might say, what are you talking about? How could you celebrate the cross? Isn't the cross the instrument of torture? That would be like celebrating the noose, you know, the hangman's noose. That would be like celebrating the lethal injection. That would be like celebrating the electric chair. How could you be celebrating the cross? Because in fact, the cross was the instrument not only of torture, but of death the time of Jesus Christ, he was convicted and he was put upon a cross to die. What are you guys doing as the Armenian Church? Celebrating the Holy Cross. Well, the answer is no further than the Bible itself. Listen to what St. Paul says. This comes to us from the letter of St. Paul, the first letter to the Corinthians. He says, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. Folly is a nice way of saying it's a joke. It's a joke to people who are perishing. People who don't understand it, people who don't get it, it's a joke to them. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Do you understand that? The power of God. Now you tell me, is that a reason to celebrate? The cross is the power of God. Jesus was convicted and put upon a cross. What was his crime? His crime was loving. His crime was he cared. His crime was he had compassion. His crime was that he was out there dealing with people. A lot of times in our lives, we know the unfairness of life. We do the things that well, we know that is right. We know these things are right. We do things out of our heart. We love, we care about people. We have compassion for other people. And sometimes we get slapped in the face. Sometimes it's unfair the way we are, they, they respond to that love. We love people and in return, they spit upon us. Maybe not literally, but figuratively. You know what I'm talking about. But what, did Jesus, what happened to Jesus? Not only was spit upon, not only was he betrayed, he was put upon a cross. Nails into his hands, into his feet. He was humiliated. He was stripped of all of his clothes. Then he was put, there was a crown of thorns put upon him. But he said, this isn't the end. In fact, from that cross, he looks down and he says, not only is this not the end, I forgive you. Whatever you're doing, you don't know what you're doing over there. And three days later, we had the resurrection but the cross was essential to get to that resurrection. The, the cross is an important element in that process. And this is what I want to talk to you. This is what I want to share with you today. Don't be scared of the cross. A lot of times people look at the cross and they say, no, 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 we don't want that. And especially in this day and age today, people aren't willing to go that extra little bit to suffer. Not in a bad sense, but to suffer for their faith. To, in other words, give a little bit time. Anybody who is successful in anything that they've done, 
knows the idea of suffering, knows the idea of giving, of, of giving a little bit more of yourself. Look at the greatest basketball play, players that we have. We're in football season right now. These people who are the quarterbacks, the, the catcher, what do you think? They just stood up one day and they said, hey, get, pass me the ball, and they caught it? No, they suffer, they sweat, they work out. They spend hours, days, weeks in training in preparation for a small little game. In the same way, our life is the game of life. And you need to prepare for that. You can't be scared of the cross. The cross means suffering for it. It means sweating for the things that are important to you. A lot of times we take our faith as if it's just something, well, that's given to us. Hey, I'm Armenian, so I'm a Christian. Or, you know what, I'll pick up the Bible and when I feel like it, I'll read a few good passages. Or, you know, yesterday I was in trouble, so let me find, oh, I know, you know that game that people play? God's going to talk to me. I'll just open the Bible and there it is. God's talking to me. Folks, your life doesn't work like that. Why do you expect the important things of life, to come about like magic. The magic is all in your hands. The magic of God is being worked out every single day in your life, in the love that you have, the compassion that you have, in, the, in that ability that you have to reach out to others. God is working there. God is the miracle in your lives. For instance, in the miracles, look at the miracles that Jesus performs. In each of the miracles, what happens? It's not a question of the supernatural, but the natural becoming super. The fish and the, fish and the bread. Those aren't supernatural elements, but they become super. They feed the people because of the faith, because of what the apostles were able to bring and what Jesus was able to multiply. In the same way, we are invited to the celebration of life without the fear. Don't have the fear of the cross. Don't have the fear of having difficulties. Yes, it is difficult. Life has problems in it. Yes, you will sweat. Yes, those crosses are difficult to bear. But remember, we have God on our side. Jesus, on the road to the cross, do you remember they pulled the pro they pulled somebody from the crowd. His name was Simon, the Cyrene. He was from the area of Cyrene. And they pulled him and they said, carry Jesus' cross for him. And this man carried Jesus' cross all the way to Golgotha. And when they got up to the place where they were going to crucify Jesus, who had to get up on the cross? Not that man, but Jesus. A lot of times we look for those Simons in our life. We say, oh, those crosses are heavy. And we think that somebody can help, help us get to those crosses, move those crosses in our lives, whether it's our health, our finances, our relationships. We're looking for help. We're looking for crutches. We're looking for people to move those crosses with us. But when we get to that place, who has to get crucified? Well, it's up to us to make those sacrifices, to give of ourselves. And when we do, what stands in front of us? but the resurrection. The resurrection, knowing that our crosses were there for a purpose, but we have overcome those crosses. In the Gospel of St. John, Jesus says so beautifully, he says, courage, the victory is mine. I have overcome this world. What's he saying? Have that courage, have that faith, that faith translates into courage. You know, when you don't have faith, what's the opposite of faith? It's fear. It's not disbelief. A lot of people don't believe. But that's not the opposite of faith. The opposite of faith is fear. Having that fear. What's going on? What's happening? Jesus says, have courage. The victory is mine. I have overcome this world. And if he overcomes it, we know that we can overcome our worlds our difficulties, our crosses. And that's why the Christian wears a cross. Look at the crosses in our, in our lives. In the church, when you walk into an Armenian church, you don't see crucifixes. Because to us, the Armenian cross is a symbol of victory. It's a symbol to be celebrated. 
It's not about the electric chair. It's not about the noose. It's not that instrument of torture. It's the instrument of opportunity. Or as St. Paul says, once again, I want to remind you, the word of the cross is folly for those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Imagine that. Now, last week I told you about some incident that had taken place in, uh, in uh, uh, Hungary and it had its repercussions in Armenia. And of course, this was the incident where an Azeri soldier was released from Hungarian jail. He was taken back to Azerbaijan and he was given a hero's welcome. Since I spoke to you last week, it's been interesting that the world has been silent about it. This is a crucifixion. This is a humiliation. This is basically the ultimate injustice. Justice is not being served. And people say, well, you know what? It's politics. It's politics because it's about Armenia and Azerbaijan. It's about Hungary. It's about the US. The US is keeping its mouth closed. They, they, they sent out a small little warning. The great Civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King, said something so beautiful, and I want you to remember this always. He says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Injustice in Armenia, in Azerbaijan, the smallest of areas, is a threat to justice in your lives, in the lives of our people in the lives of America, in the lives of the world. That's how it moves out. That's where the power of the cross, the power of God has to be spoken. It's not about politics. It's about our responsibility as Christians, our responsibility as children of Christ. What would Christ do? He took the responsibility of the cross. He mounted the cross. He said, this is something that I cannot avoid. But I'll tell you something, have courage to pick up that cross. Have courage to suffer. Have courage to go through those difficulties in life. And remember, I have overcome that cross. I have overcome this world. You can overcome it as well. When I look at what's going on in Armenia and Azerbaijan, I see a devastating, uh, devastating situation, not only to Armenia, but to the entire world. And I see it as my responsibility, not as an Armenian, but as a Christian. Yes, as an Armenian, I'm, I'm, I'm moved, it hurts me, but as a Christian, I'm infuriated. I'm seeing an injustice and I'm saying it's up to me. It's up to me as a child of God to speak out against that injustice in the smallest of places. That's a cross for me. And there are so many crosses in our lives. As I said a few minutes ago, we have health issues. We have financial issues. Right now, we're going through this incredible, incredible recession, depression, financial situation in the world. We have situations that take place between us in relationships, between our family members in our friends, difficulties. These are crosses. These are crosses that sometimes feel unbearable. We look for a Simon who could help us move that cross, whatever it may be. But at the end, don't be afraid of it. Jesus Christ says, courage, the victory is mine. And I know this is a difficult one, but this is what the Armenian church celebrates on this day. We celebrate the elevation of the cross an event that took place several centuries ago when in Jerusalem they elevated the cross. It wasn't about that piece of wood. It's what it symbolized. And that symbol is a symbol of suffering. It is a symbol of victory. I'm inviting you to not only get involved in your churches, but to look for those symbols, look for those suffering opportunities and not be scared of them. Not invite them into your life, but realizing and identifying them and saying that as a child of Christ, I can overcome it. Why? Because it is not a joke. It is not a folly. It is the power of God. I'm not looking forward to those crosses as something that I could escape. I'm looking forward to those as opportunities to reveal the power of God in my life, wherever it may be. 
May your crosses be bearable. I pray that your crosses may be light, but whatever the cross may be, don't be scared of it. Christ took on his cross, and you see that at the end of it, the resurrection is there. The resurrection is inside every single cross in our lives. The resurrection is waiting to happen. It's the touchdown after all the sweat. It's the basket after all the, the discipline. It's the life that you have in, your, in, in you, the life that you share with one another. May God bless you. I invite you to get involved in the church, wherever it may be in your lives. Find it on our diocesan website if you want to get involved with me. You'll find me at epostle.net. That's apostolic evangelism for an electronic universe. Until next week, I remind you that all of this we do to give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.